My name is Craig Sell, and I welcome you to the Pace Insight Series, sponsored today by iContact. The subject is Unpacking South Africa's Solid Offshoring Fundamentals as the Most Favored Offshore CX Delivery Location in 2021. We will unpack some of the country's strong offshoring fundamentals from economics, scale, service levels, linguistics, skilled workforces, compliance and regulation, and even its socially responsible supply chains, all factors that matter to businesses looking for a quality offshoring partner and destination. On this Pace Insight, we are joined by Clinton Cohen, Chief Executive Officer at iContact. Good morning, Clinton. Morning, Craig. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So let's just dive right in here, sir. So what is the driving global interest in South Africa's offshoring industry? It really has been a long time coming for South Africa. So what do you feel has changed recently? Craig, I think it, it's a tremendous question, you know, and multifaceted, multi-layered. When, when you measure South Africa as an outsourced destination, compared to the likes of India, Philippines, South Africa's always been ranked there kind of second, third, consecutively for the past three years. This year, 2021, as you mentioned earlier, you know, South Africa has just been voted most favorite offshore CX location. And this stands as a tremendous feat that we've always been there quietly in the background, and now it's the chance to shine. I think coupled on top of that is when organizations and obviously the transformation through COVID, all of a sudden workforces, businesses, employees are now working from home. Organizations realize, well, if my staff are at home, this outsourcing, offshoring is probably not so scary. So I think it's coupled, and I mean, we can drill into so much more to that, but on a high level, you know, that would be my take and view on it. It's phenomenal. So what are the key benefits of offshoring to South Africa in terms of cost, quality, and compliance, and human capital and skills? Like where South Africa is positioned, and obviously to any English-speaking country, English is our primary native-speaking language. Um, Secondly, coupled with kind of cost for any organization looking where they can get a better ROI, um, South Africa ranks anywhere between 40 to 60 percent less than an onshore delivery location. Um, so that makes it a second attractive area in terms of outsourcing. Together with a highly skilled, educated workforce, it means the delivery of quality of service to end users, whether it be in North America, UK, Australia, um, or any region for that matter, that skill level of be it agents, team leaders, managers come in and meet those requirements from a quality delivery perspective. South Africa is also known or seen as the economic hub of Africa. And with a strong foundation and a mature BPO sector, although it's smaller than the likes of Philippines and India, um, the mature BPO sector, being having serviced the global community for many years now, really stands us in that good, sweet spot of, I'm going to call it the undiscovered new gem, new resource uh, location that, you know, are some of the key driving benefits for outsourcing to South Africa. Very interesting. Thank you. So tell us more about the infrastructure and business mm -hmm. operating environment in South Africa. Craig, any, any, any destination, and particularly with regards to South Africa, um, the certain, you know, perceptions of views that any international person who may never have been to South Africa. Um, the background of my picture is uh, yeah, the Johannesburg city center. Um, and it might be somewhat different to what viewers, listeners may have interpreted about South Africa. But what we do have in terms of our first world transportation systems, uh, public buses and trains, our transport nodes into our major metros, um, the undersea cable and infrastructure for 
connectivity into the global markets is world class and you know followed by our business viewpoints of following international best practices, um, whether it be from ISO, PCI, customer experience standards, are certainly the way you know, South Africa conducts itself from a business standpoint. Gotcha. So where is South Africa's BPO industry growth headed and how does this compare with the likes of Philippines and India? Similar to how I mentioned earlier and what's exciting about South Africa, you know, um, our, our global business sector is growing 25% year on year. Um, what are our numbers today? South Africa currently has around 270,000 employees in the sector. With that 25% year on year growth, we forecasting, expecting in the next three to five years to be around 500,000 employees. And with a strategic goal for all of us in the sector, by 2030 to reach 750,000 employees. Wow. So do you think that the impact of the pandemic has played a role in the growth of outsourcing to South Africa specifically? Definitely. Yeah. That's a great question. And definitely. And, I, and I'm certainly a firm believer. So um, in my mind and how I kind of saw the phases, you know, we've been servicing the international markets from a South African perspective for many years, closely aligned with probably our biggest delivery location going into the UK, uh, second into kind of US and Australia. But having gone through the pandemic and organizations pivoting, re-looking costs, re-looking different destinations, South Africa as that hidden gem really came more to the forefront of maybe some of the North American, or I, I, I can't even I can't even say it's just North America. I think it's global, where they're looking for a new destination that maybe not as saturated as yeah. I'm I'm going to use the Philippines, but we're probably where the Philippines was ten years ago, and as a destination, really able to fulfil those. Um, commitment, contract obligations, skillfulness, there's so much growth that we can see in our sector. And I definitely think the pandemic had uh, just a slight part to play in that. Yeah, very insightful. So how geared is the South Africa industry to handle the challenges around the pandemic and the impact this is having on contact centers and in fact, businesses worldwide? It's obviously an important factor in terms of business continuity for clients. Sure. And, and, and Craig, this was, you know, really experienced firsthand by, you know, everyone on a global scale. But if I share my related experience, what happened here in South Africa and towards the end of March in 2020, when, you know, no one really understood what COVID was and how this is going to impact us and the whole country locked down and we went into these strict level regulated everybody out of the office, everyone locked down, work from home. Um, our two industry bodies in South Africa, Papesa KPPO, you know, really rallied strongly together with government and got a line into the presidential ear in terms of how do we continue to operate under these crazy, unwildly yeah, experiences and what can we do to enable businesses to return to work in a safe, uh, constructive manner? And with through through those, you know, through our industry body collaboration and the strong support of government, by being deemed essential service as a sector by bringing in foreign investment for internet from international clients, and being able to return to work. Uh, we understand with its limitations and, you know, environments having to screen up and employees wearing masks or shields on calls, really not only put to protect themselves, but to protect the organization and the continuity of business. Um, I think, you know, it was a tremendous feat and a tremendous rally that um, as a sector, we pulled together colleagues, competitors, and everyone was driving for the same agenda to say, how do we continue to operate with best practice? Absolutely. So switching gears a bit, South Africa faces huge challenges in terms of youth unemployment and the BPO sector 
has been highlighted as one of those industries that can make a big difference on this front. So tell us more about the government support for the industry and also the industry approach to impact sourcing. Craig, it's, it's absolutely, you know, anyone in the sector's responsibility, opportunity to have such a significant impact on employees' lives. Um, but where we extrapolate that further is by providing employment to those who are previously unemployed, um, not only giving them above living wage standards employment, they're able to then take that back and improve the life of their community too. When we talk about impact sourcing, and I've kind of you know, hit a real spot of mine and, and an absolute passion and driver, uh, impact sourcing talks about those from previously disadvantaged or those in previously disadvantaged communities who don't have access to job markets, who don't have uh, funds available to come into the major metros and seek job opportunities. And again, here where South Africa's really done well and really driving um, a tremendous agenda is together with some of the institutions that are able to take these workplace opportunities into those rural communities where you really have the opportunity to find those are called diamonds in the rough. Um, you know, and besides for these portals that are driven through app development or, uh, you know, through web creation that gives um, those disadvantaged youth or disadvantaged employees that are, are out there, you know, the second drivers are organizations like Eye Contact and many of my uh, competitive or colleagues in the industry doing these rural drives, going out into those um, areas where the, you're really getting an opportunity to interview raw talent, um, you really seeing it, and it is such a humbling, I mean, I'm, I'm getting shivers, humbling, impactful, mind-blowing opportunity to hear really some of these tremendous interviews that I had with people who are just passionate, talented, and just had no access to the formal job sector. Yeah, that's just superb. Thank you for sharing that. So Clinton, in terms of eye contact BPO, where are you seeing the growth of coming from terms of specific industries, BPO services and countries that are offshoring to South Africa? Like I think, you know, there's definite, there's been a definite increase from the North American uh, market. And just because the sheer size of the North American uh, sector and previously South African you know, servicing around about 17%, um, there's been a big shift and a big focus coming out of that destination. I don't want to say it's only from that destination because South Africa is now really ranking in that forefront and as a new location it's really coming through but we are definitely seeing it in the financial service sector in the retail and e-commerce and when you go into uh, what parts of it I think it's customer experience sales and digital RT are sectors that I've been finding a large amount of interest traction from potential buyers prospects um, and seeing the real value and seeing the delivery value creation coming out of South Africa, I think that's really put uh, that demand drive coming from the global, global market. 100%. Well, thank you to our viewers for listening today. And thanks to Clinton Cohen of iContact as our sponsor. I applaud you, sir. So um, I'm Craig Sell with Pace and listen in for the next big insight coming your way soon. Thanks for having me, Craig. Thank you again.